What's up, everybody? Welcome to Ink Drink Think, episode 10. If you watched episode 9, I left you on the stinger that this week we'd be tackling one pointy-eared fellow. And, of course, if you're clicking on the video, you already know who it is. The Cape Crusader himself, Batman. I am your host, Michael Pickard. Joined by, as always, my wonderfully talented co-host and friends, Johnny Wise. Johnny, you have the stage. Hey, I'm Johnny. Um, I am a big Batman fan. Um, he's been my guy since I was a very small boy. I think Batman and Robin was the first film I ever saw, which um, at the time I thought was just incredible. Um, and I still have a little space in my heart for it. Um, <laughs> Uh, tonight I'm going to be drawing a quite a noirish kind of detective-y kind of Batman. Um, I've been kind of fixated after that Batman trailer on like a real dark seven-ish kind of Batman. So uh, Batman and Commissioner Gordon and a murder victim and an alleyway, which took me the longest time to draw. I, I thought alleyways were going to be really easy. So I just left it to last to just figure out, and it took a lot of redraws, but I'm somewhere with it now. It's getting there. <laughs> Sweet, and man. And tonight I'm, I'm drinking a Moscow Mule. Classy, my friend. I'm having a posh one tonight, yeah. And it's gone. <laughs> Breaking out the yeah, good stuff for Batman. <laughs> <laughs> right. Is it yours this time around? Because the last time it wasn't your Moscow Mule that you were polishing it is off. once again not my Moscow Mule. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it classy, my friend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course, guys, joining us as well. You know him well. Nate well. Yeah. Z with an S. Okay. <laughs> you have the floor. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, Nate Wells. Super excited to uh, finally be drawing Batman on this thing. Just been waiting. Uh, you won't see me next episode. This is it. Um, I'm done <laughs> since we drew Batman. No, this is like the big one, though. Uh, I think we've all been kind of like putting it off because we're like, no, we're too excited to do Batman. We can't do it just yet. Um, we're finally doing it, and I am, I'm jazzed. Uh, I'm drawing Batman being real mean, like hanging a guy off of a rooftop. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's it's a little scary. It's a little violent, but I'm 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 here for it. Uh, tonight I'm drinking a, a what's this thing called? A Stash IPA um, from uh, Independence Brewing down in Austin. Drinking it, of course, out of my Superman and powerful pickup lines pint glass. I think we're running out, though, of these things. Um, uh, you don't have to be a brainiac to figure out you belong with me. Have I told you guys that one yet? No, I like that one. That was a good one. That's a good yeah, one. That's <laughs> perfectly <laughs> cheesy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're all kind of bad, but that's probably a reason I haven't used that one yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's fu it's funny you're you're. Um, talking about how we haven't tackled batman yet and i think it is a matter of like you know we we we're just kind of getting to know each other we didn't want to rush into things but now that we've all gotten really comfortable with each other you know we've hung out a ton of times like tonight's the night it's the magical night yeah, yeah you know? man. <laughs> we consummate things on ink drink thing. <laughs> comfortable enough with you guys now that we can <laughs> yes. we can all argue about batman <laughs> we broke um, you we bought you <laughs> And guys, you know him well. Not as well as Nate Wells, but Teacher Todd himself, Todd Blackwood. Todd, you are up. Hey. Oh, boy. Hope you guys are ready for this. Uh, I'm Todd, and I have a hundred and... I realized I put them all in one folder. I have a hundred and ten Batman drawings I'm working on. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. I know, right? <laughs> Uh, but I'm, I decided to, uh, I want to take a crack at the Batmobile. Um, uh. so I, my grandfather used to drive an old uh, Dodge, Dodge Charger. He was a race car driver. And, uh, I was, I wanted to try to put the, uh, Adam West bat, uh, pinstripes from the old Batmobile onto a, uh, more boxy, tough looking car. So I had to go somewhere. This is like a 69, uh, I think. But anyways, I've also got, um, man, I got so much stuff. I don't even know to start. <laughs> I've got a Batman Heads model sheet uh, that I'm doing, uh, as well as uh, actual pages. Oh, and I've got uh, a Robin that I'm doing as well. Is this, Hell yeah. is this my right. screen super bright? It's a little bright, but we can see the outline of Robin. Pretty bright. Pretty bright. Yeah. Okay. 
we'll get there. And then I've got, um, I think I showed you guys my Batgirl that I've been working on. Oh, yeah. Todd, are you just so jazzed up for Batman that you're like, I have enough energy to do 101 Batman drawings? <laughs> I, You know, it's funny because I wouldn't say Batman's my favorite superhero, but he's so fun to draw. And I love that. I, I think I've been having this mindset of like, I, I, it's, I, I want to do a Batman portfolio. Like, what would my Batman world look like? Because uh, I feel yeah. like there's always room for it. There's always room for everybody's got their own version of Batman and they all work. And yeah. Uh, I feel like it's been forming in my mind for a while and um, gothic ghost stories is a direction I want to pursue with my work. And I, it of course naturally applies to Batman's like, Oh, I can view Batman through that lens. And I just have been rediscovering his stuff. It just happens. Um, been going back and watching uh, old Bruce Tim Batman and Justice League and Batman Year One and yeah, obviously I got a lot to say. So, <laughs> well, trust me, edit myself. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've got I got a lot of Batman here. Oh lordy. <laughs> yeah, man, this episode is gonna be fun to edit, and I say that somewhat sarcastically yeah. because I know if we are not if left unchecked, we're gonna be here until yeah. the waking hours yeah. talking Batman. <laughs> Straight up, just tomorrow for Johnny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I won't even say anything. I'll just be like, "Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'll sleep another time." <laughs> Before we hop into the special guest, which I'm sure if you're watching, you've noticed already, I am Michael Pickard, and tonight, instead of drinking alcohol, which would be fun, I'm being a lame duck and I'm enjoying some coffee. <laughs> in my uh, Mickey Mouse mug. So having some black coffee in the uh, spirit of the Dark Knight. And uh, I'm going to be doing a Dark Knight Returns piece tonight. Um, Carrie Kelly and Batman swooping in over Gotham. Uh, you'll be able to see it when I flip the camera. But before I do that, as I mentioned, you've clearly noticed that there's a fifth member joining us tonight. And I am so excited to bring to you Matt Battaglia, our special guest tonight. Matt. What is up, man? Hey, uh, you know, I'm excited to be here. I didn't realize how important the Batman episode was. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm intruding a little bit, but but I'm I'm super, super stoked for it. Uh, uh, outside of outside of the Punisher, I feel like the Batman's the best comic book character of all time. And it's oh, certainly the most true. flexible and, and, and has the most seminal stories. And uh, I like I think all of you guys love drawing Batman. It's yeah, it's, it, he's he's a lot of fun, um, and uh, I'm just excited to sit down and draw for a few hours tonight, um, do some inking, yeah. and uh, talk some comics. It's always great to clear the head to talk some comics. So, <laughs> yeah. I haven't in a while, so I'm, this is exciting. I haven't drawn a Batman in, in ages, so um, I'm really stoked. I'm also doing something Dark Knight Returns themed because, I mean, I think we're all going to agree have to. We all probably agree. I, I know this is an assumption, but I think we all know Dark Knight Returns is like a seminal masterpiece. We've all probably yeah, studied mm -hmm. it constantly, and uh, it's it's one of the books that really got me into comics. So yeah, you um, can't yeah. can't ignore it. Yeah, no nah, man, of course. Um, for anybody watching who's unfamiliar with your work, um, oh, what is some yeah. of your professional background that uh, you can parlay to the audience? That um, <laughs> oh, so. I recently had um, a book called Leap M, which was published by Action Labs, came out, uh, oh God, I can't even remember when now. This year has been <laughs> such like a, a weird blur. I don't know when anything is. Um, but Doug Wood wrote it, um, who you're working with for, for Ultramax. So mm -hmm. that's exciting. That, that came out a little while ago. I um, previously did, a, oh, ages ago, please don't go read it. Uh, my art is atrocious in it. But uh, uh, this book, Indoctrination, with, with uh, Mike Morisi. And uh, he and I also colored Roche Limit with, for him, for Image. And uh, before that, I colored Dead Letters um, for Boom. And I um, did a Hellraiser cover. And there I did a short in a Hellraiser book. Uh, also, please don't track it down. It's <laughs> awful. Uh, I was not ready. Uh, and not prepared to do comics at that time. So uh, it's oh. um, uh, so anyway, so I'm excited to talk some more comics. I can also also check out, I have a couple, I have an Instagram comic strip that I, I promise I will get back to updating soon. It's called Unspeakable. 
um, it's if you do at unspeakable comic, it'll pop up. There, there's like 25 strips up there, so there's enough to read at least for right now. Um, and I have a couple books up on my website just for free to read. Um, Matchabat.com. So. Great, That's man. the plugs. Cool. That was all the plugs. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You never have to do it again, except in part no. two. <laughs> no, <laughs> we won't, I won't force you to two. do that all again, man. But uh, talk about pedigree. Um, yeah. Like just the yeah, caliber yeah. you're bringing to the show right now. You and Todd both have such storied experiences in comics between <laughs> the two of you. Um, yeah, it's fantastic to get you on just from you know the professional insight you can provide, but also... <laughs> Your art's fantastic, and watching you draw Batman is going to be crazy cool. I hope I can live up to the hype that you're providing. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but huh? my first question I'm going to throw out to everybody is, what is your favorite Batman story? It doesn't have to be necessarily comics. Uh, it could be film, but I know Matt had touched upon it a little bit with um, uh, Dark Knight Returns being a seminal work. It might be my favorite, but it's it's also not the most traditional Batman comic in terms of story structure, but it's kick-ass, undeniably. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I'd say... Oh, sorry, sorry. No, you go, you go. Um, I'd say for me, probably year one. Um, mm -hmm. I, yeah. You know, it's weird because it's, it's probably not my favorite, like, Batman, Batman story because it is so like Gotham focused and Jim Gordon focused, but it's possibly, and I may have actually already committed to it on an episode before. It's probably my favorite comic of all time, just because I think the writing and the art are married so well, and uh, and I'm a huge Mazzucchelli fan. Um, and that book really kind of converted the way I drew. I found that book. I was maybe a freshman in high school. I don't remember. And I was very into, uh, at that time, sort of like the Jim Lee house style uh, yeah. look. And then I got year one. I picked it up at like Hastings. It was uh, like in the used books section. And I was like, well, this looks pretty cool. Um, and I knew, like I knew Frank Miller then because I had read Dark Knight. And I picked up year one. And I didn't immediately, and I think I've touched on this already too, so I'm probably being redundant, but I didn't immediately like the art, but I looked at it yeah. all the time. Yeah. And I was like, well, maybe I do like the art. And then eventually I conceded, yes, I do like it. And actually I'm going to study the living shit out of this book. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That's a good pick. Yeah. I, I'm, I feel like, um, I feel like the Miller Batman is such like, a uh it's such a pinnacle for the character i mean i i feel like strikes even dark knight strikes again it's not really a great it's not really a batman tale it's broader than that but but that's even a work that's i think gotten so much better with age um i also like yeah. some of the weirder stuff like the klaus jansen did a did a run with grant morrison called batman gotha which was fun but uh i'll throw him out as my like alternate pick is uh is um, Batman Year 100 by Paul Pope, which mm, yeah. I I adore Paul Pope's work. He's you know just one of these those creators who's always interesting, and his art is fantastic. And Year 100 has so many really wonderful ideas in it, and uh, so I, I think that's totally a book worth picking up and reading if you haven't already. Yeah. Yeah, Paul Pope's Batman alone. Um, I I believe it was off air last night when we were discussing it. Um, but stylistically, he's one of those people who, even though it's um, just Batman in the sense that graphically speaking, it has all of the elements that make it just another Batman. His take on the character is so unique. It's yeah. so yeah. intrinsically Paul Pope that like you look at it and it just has so much flair and character to it. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the way he designs a character and especially their like um the clothing and all that stuff, it's just it's 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 unmistakable. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's the way you should do it. it. That's changed is that, you know, people used to establish themselves on mainstream characters and then take that audience with them and start doing more personal work. And I love the way that folks like him in particular started out doing more personal work and, and got brought on to take that approach to established characters. Uh, yeah. that, that's the way to go, you know, and that's a that's a really good change that's happened in the industry in the last, you know, 20, 30 years or whatever it is. That used to not be the case, though. I mean, you could either make money creating superheroes or you could be broke and draw personal stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I, I, think, I think when people were able to actually, you know, not go that mainstream route and didn't have to be Alan Moore uh, to sell a comic and not do Batman necessarily. It's great to do Batman, but yeah, Paul Pope is a real inspiration on all kinds of different levels. Have you read a lot of his um, his other stuff? Paul Pope? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I love his... I mean, I'm, I noticed... I was shocked when he started doing mainstream stuff because on the one hand, it I, I kept thinking I could see it, but I didn't think that the that mainstream comics was smart enough to do it. And yeah. then the, I think the first mainstream thing I ever saw him do that, and I might be totally wrong, but he did a, sh a Star Trek short story in Wired magazine uh, when the 2006 movie came out. Mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, a tie-in, and it was fantastic. Um, I've never seen that. I'm going to have to track that down now. Yeah, I don't know where else it would have been published, but it was one of those things where that that reboot of Star Trek, I really loved. I thought it was that first movie, I think, is a classic. Um, and his it was all about uh, old Spock on that planet, uh, reminiscing about his childhood and, and talking about huh. Khan. So it's a real... Like, it just gets you on all levels. I don't. I don't think he wrote it. I think Kurtzman and those guys wrote it. Um, but I mean, he just nailed it. Colored it probably himself. Um, yeah, it'd be fun to see him do more Star Trek or anything. And then I think he started doing Batman here and there. And then it was like, oh, cool. Apparently, mainstream and and non mainstream have officially collided. Um, but yeah, it's great to see those those things happen. So we're on the topic of Paul Pope being one of those seminal Batman artists. Um, to you guys, yeah. who are some of those fellow Batman creators in, from the visual perspective, not getting into writing yet, um, who tackle the character in a way that you think is important historically to uh, comics in general or just personally a preference of your own? Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I mentioned Mazu Kelly already, so I won't talk a lot about him although we, like i'm sure we all could um yeah. but we talked about him a little bit before we started recording lee weeks is an artist that i i really admire and i think his uh his batman is uh is really really special because it it's it's in that uh that like superhero comics house style ish look but it's expressive in a way that you don't get in a lot of house style stuff and his storytelling and just like image making ability is phenomenal while yeah. still being unmistakably a superhero comic and i i think he does batman uh sort of perfectly yeah yeah i'd agree with that uh and also it's, it's um, so accessible i think to to any reader yeah for sure uh, Raphael Grandpa is one that always springs mm. to mind. Oh, His right. Batman is like fucking weird, but really, really good. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, his his Batman. Um, I know he did one cover that is a um, it's like Batman on a gargoyle, and yeah, it, it's like almost like Dia de los Muertes, and it's like graphic elements. Like there are a lot of skulls, I think, hidden throughout it. Um, mm. It's beautiful. It's such an awesome Batman piece. Yeah. Yeah. And his, uh, did you read his black and white story? No, I haven't. That's good. It's another one that's really, we really weird. But, um, hmm. like, that was probably where I first saw him on Batman. And it has, like, it has all sorts of, like, 
influences it's got like a little bit of an adam west to it in yeah. some ways in like the face um but it's just like so dynamic and i got like real even though they look their art looks obviously really different obviously when i saw paul pope's year 100 for the first time i had the same kind of feeling of like this is really weird this is a weird yeah. way of drawing stuff and i fucking love it <laughs> well and speaking of frank miller didn't he do he just did a batman book with frank miller didn't he the golden child mm-hmm. he did yeah yeah i really yeah. liked that but i didn't i didn't finish it i haven't but, read uh, it yet i like I the uh his batgirl or a bat i can't remember what she's whether she's called batgirl in it it's carrie kelly right I believe so yeah yeah that's a cool design Yeah, I think you touched upon something that for me is really important with, I mean, artists in general, but for the point of conversation, Batman artists is um, not necessarily sticking to the house style for the character. Yeah. Um, so, like, I mean, I, I've been restraining myself in bringing him up yeah. as I normally do, but Tony Sammons has done some awesome Batman work. Um, yeah. And similarly, Mike Mignola, of course, his Batman is yeah. very much his own. Um, and has those Hellboy flavors that you would expect in that character. But for me, like with yeah. Batman artists, like I think that the more individual uh, individuality you put into the character and that, that sphere, um, the more life comes to it, you know? Um, like I think that's one of the reasons the Tim Burton Batman movies work is that there's so much Tim Burton graphic elements to it in terms of the style and the atmosphere that – it comes to life more or like Mike Mignola's Mm. Batman comes to life more because he's putting so much of himself into the, the visual design, you know, Mm. John Paul Leon is another one. Um, Oh yeah. I think every time I draw Batman, I I do a quick search or pull out some books uh, to look at John Paul Leon's Batman because it's just, Oh my God. It's, It's so good. Yeah. Uh, how about Kevin Nolan? You guys, Kevin Nolan fan? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, Kevin Nolan is great. Have you seen the? Uh, uh, I God, I, I'm racking my brains as far as favorite Batman stories. That one threw me, but uh, I think one of the more important Batman stories that was ever done was in Secret Origins, and it's a Man Bat Secret Origin that um, Kevin Nolan drew, and that was a monumental influence on tons of people, including Mike Mignola, uh, who I believe uh, bought all the art and owns it, and was like, "I need to own all of that." Oh wow! And then when they did, when Bruce Tim does, did the Batman cartoon in 1992 or whatever it was, 1990, 92. Uh, he hired Mignola and Kevin Nolan to design the characters for, uh, so, um, I know Kevin Nolan designed Man Bat and Matt Hatter and Killer Croc, I think. Um, but it, yeah, it was, uh, it was like kind of the, it was the one that it went super under the radar, uh, but it was very simple and the letter, he lettered it himself and it's a great little story. Um, <clears throat> I've been looking at it a lot recently because I really like how Kevin Nolan draws backgrounds. Um, he does these really like speaking of alleys, like if I could do an alley like Kevin um, Nolan, that'd be super cool. Cause he, he's really good at making these organic weird messes um, that are angular, but moody. Um, yeah. And lots of shadows, great color sense. I don't know what he's up to now, but it's always nice to see more work from Kevin Nolan. But that story in particular is a uh, really nailed it for me. Yeah, I think I've seen some like alternate character designs for uh, maybe like earlier designs for the animated series that he did that look a yeah. little bit more like his normal stuff, kind of simplified. And I thought, yeah. you know, I mean. Bruce, Bruce Tim I definitely modified him. Yeah, I wouldn't change anything about the finished product, but it would be like I did love the sort of like more Nolan y um, designs yeah. that he did probably yeah. earlier on. Yeah. Do you guys think yeah. that Frank Miller is the seminal Batman writer? 
Uh, I know to some people he is. For me, he's not. But I know that his take on the character throughout all the various iterations um, is inarguably for most people like Batman. Like, that is Batman to most people. Yeah. Yeah, I think pretty much. Um, yeah, I... Oh, also, going back to artists, I forgot to mention uh, Brian Bolland. Bolland, oh, Bolland yes, yeah. is obviously a great one. I was looking at him a lot today. Um, but Alan Moore, uh, Killing Joke, I, we were saying, is like, I, I love Killing Joke, but uh, I do have one or two issues with it, whereas like Frank Miller, mm-hmm. less so. I mean, unless yeah. you're delving into his post Dark Knight Returns work which yeah. I haven't really read much I think it's well intentioned it's, it's it, you know I think it gets a deservedly bad rap but at the same time I think there's interesting stuff going on there and right. um, you know I, th- I think if he'd slowed down a little I don't know what the issue was it's just it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense in areas uh, in the art but you know he can draw when he wants to but there's some pretty weird drawing going on in that one yeah really strange stuff that was the reason i just never bothered with it is that some of it just looks borderline (laughs) illegible (laughs) funny gets pretty funny looking yeah um and i don't know what's up with that but he's always you know he's his ideas are more important than the actual drafting and uh, but but you know, like I, I thought Master Race was great. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's such a t- tough man. Did you guys like Court of Owls? Uh yeah, I did. I liked it a lot. I'm ashamed to say I never read it. I wanted to. I, it sounded great. Was, was that Grant Morrison or was that um, Snyder? Snyder. Yeah, yeah, that was. Uh, was that like the first arc from the New Fifty Two, or did they kind of lead into that? I think that was the first one. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the first like two volumes. If I'm not. Mistaken. Yeah, because I remember Batman being the obvious standout of the New Fifty Two books as like one of the only ones that was working. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I haven't gone back, admittedly, but at the time I read it and, and thought it was great. Yeah. I'm kind of excited by the concept of them maybe putting the Court of Owls in the new movie. Oh, yeah. If they so. are. Yeah, I think as far as um, contemporary Batman runs, um, Scott Snyder's is probably one of the better ones. Yeah, for sure. It's not always a hit, a of- like... I know, like, oh, Super Heavy doesn't work for a lot of people, where um, Jim Gordon becomes Batman. But, oh, yeah. Um, like, even just the, from the first volume alone, like, the introduction of the Court of Owls, I think they are probably the best addition to the Batman mythos since Red Hood, maybe. Yeah. So, yeah, I think you're, like, think you you're can't right knock with that. Him, you can't knock him too hard, because it's always like, oh, yeah, he introduced this awesome villain concept to the Batman universe. You know? Yeah. Right. So that kind of segues into another question, but aside from the Joker, because it's probably the easiest answer, <laughs> um, <laughs> who would you guys say are, for you, some of the better Batman villains? Killer Croc. I was going to say Killer Croc. Killer Croc's a great one, I think. Interesting. Yeah, I love Killer Croc, man. Just from the visual, or um... all of it. Uh, He's a great. He's great because he's. I like him because he's a great. He's totally a Batman villain, and yet he's so much more of a thug as opposed to the esoteric uh, Batman villains that we usually get, which are all great. But like Killer Croc, yeah, he's also some of the best Batman cartoons are the ones with Killer Croc, including the one with Baby Doll. Oh my God! Uh, oh, that one's great. Yeah, yeah, and he's just—he's a like, great goon. Yeah, he and he and Batman just duke it out. There's no, nothing clever going on. It's just like, all right, we're gonna beat the crap out of each other. Yeah, and, uh, plus you can really dial up the horror with him as well. What's up? You can really dial up the horror with him as well. 
You can have him as like a oh, monster right. in the sewers that eats people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's like he's like I said, he's so he's such a Batman villain, you know. And yeah, yeah he, uh, he's you know more interesting than like Bane to me. Yeah, I like back. Bane too. Take, but, me uh... <laughs> Take that back. Yeah, yeah, I do love Bane. I love yeah. Bane. Yeah, it took me a long time to warm up to Bane. Um, I like him now, but at the time he seemed like the the Batman villain that was people weren't trying to re- as hard. Um, but I, I like him now. I, I know what you mean. I like Mister Freeze as well. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Wasn't there a rumor? I think there's a rumor that Mister Freeze is going to be in the new movie. Oh really? Yeah, I heard that they're they're not telling anybody, but that's one of the things that they're going to at least introduce the character somehow. Hmm. I think it would be too cluttered if they full on went Mister Freeze, but yeah, maybe to introduce the character, I'd like to see but him later. Yeah, on. I think I think the character Victor Freeze will be introduced. Cool. You heard Happy it here first, work. folks. Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> is coming back for the bat. Yeah. <laughs> Let's kick some ice. <laughs> I feel like George Clooney could be a good Batman as well. I'm disappointed. Could, yeah, he really, I think, could have been. Val Kilmer yeah. as well. Sure. Yeah. 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 I was surprised when that didn't work. I, I thought for sure that that was going to be what they needed. And then I saw the movie and I was like, what? In our Superman episode, which is also live on YouTube, go check that out, we talked briefly about... Who would have played Superman in the George Clooney Batman universe set in the 90s? Boom. So my question to you four is who should have played Batman in the Christopher Reeve Superman universe? I have two answers and I believe one of them is going to be widely accepted and the other one might take some convincing. Hmm. But firstly... Clint Eastwood. Well, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <All right. laughs> yeah. My second one, young Harrison Ford, circa a new uh, hope. Ooh. Wow. Uh, That's exactly. the one I knew it was going to take some convincing. Uh, oh, I think it'd be great. I, 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 it, it's, I, it's a, it never occurred to me. Gosh. Uh, wow. Matt, you disagree? <laughs> I guess it depends on the the. I don't know. I have a tough time picturing it. Like I feel like Harrison Ford is almost yeah. too fun. But like, and it like wouldn't contrast with the. Although I guess if you're doing it with the Christopher Reeve Superman, you kind of want someone who's a lot more pleasant. Clint East would be would be like an extreme contrast to Christopher Reeves. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> what do you mean you turn back time? <laughs> <laughs> you can't turn back time. You can only go forward. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think uh, with Harrison Ford. I think you could make the argument because it's like if you do that fun, um, pulpy kind of take on Batman, which is a little bit like Dick Sprang inspired, but also like poking fun of itself. Because you know Harrison mm-hmm. Ford, if you're like. All right, Harrison, we want you to play Bruce Wayne, who's a millionaire, who dresses up in a a cloth costume that's shaped like a bat. Harrison Ford would be like, I'm not doing that shit. That's ridiculous. But I think if he would do it with his, like, like, this is ridiculous attitude, it would really work. That's the other thing, though. I can't picture, like, I can picture Clint Eastwood's face in a Batman mask, but I can't actually picture Clint Eastwood physically ever doing that. I feel like it would be beneath him in some way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I think both uh, of them would think it was goofy bullshit and they just would not do it. Yeah. But Marlon Brando uh, was ca- uh, was Jorel. Yeah, but Marlon that's Brando true. would do literally anything for a paycheck. So that's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a. Uh, that's tough. Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> <laughs> that could work if that. I if, want it. If you were doing like an Adam West style Batman, I yeah. could totally see that. Yeah, no, super serious. 
Super serious. <laughs> <laughs> straw, yeah. straw Dogs, Dustin Hoffman. Yeah, yeah, Straw oh. Dogs. He's also like the first uh, the first okay. movie in the franchise is just uh, The Graduate. He's just <laughs> Yoko Wayne in that movie. <laughs> that's, uh, that's an interesting thought. Now, uh, uh, Charles Bronson, just just throw him in there. Let him just beat people up. <laughs> just be <laughs> brutal. <laughs> yeah. Christopher Reeves walks in and is like, hey, don't you think we should like calm it down a bit? And he's like bloodying his no. knuckles against some goon on the street. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Marvin, like those, like a, I, one of those, like classic tough guy actors who, uh, I, actually, that whole period of act, act, like of of acting, like the Gene Hackmans of the world, like I don't feel, I feel like those guys, do, like you don't, they don't exist anymore. Yeah, yeah, real character actors back then that are yeah, and they like, weren't like pretty. Much. Yeah. Yeah, like leading leading man character actors that yeah were not yeah. just like crazy you know like uh you know Jack Nicholson yeah fuck it Jack Nicholson's Batman <laughs> you know young Jack Nicholson and then the Joker it. yeah both roles he's, he's just he's just both yeah he just got started earlier doing Joker and he's just both <laughs> yeah I can see and Chris Chinatown Reed is there just going like yeah exactly yeah Chinatown Jack mm. sure. That's what happened after The Shining was just he turned into Batman. <laughs> Did you guys already do the ranking and, and agree that Ben Affleck's Batman is actually the best Batman followed up by Michael Keaton? No, we haven't oh, had that God, conversation, no. but I love Batman. No, we definitely, we definitely haven't said that. <laughs> yeah. you, you, that was a joke. <laughs> I uh, if if they did a solo Ben Affleck oh, yeah. Bat, Batfleck Batman movie, it'd it'd be incredible. I'm right there I, with I, you. I will die on that so. hill. I think I think it, they actually done the thing where he wrote, directed, and starred in, and it was just the town, but he was Batman. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I know I'd said it to you guys on the podcast before, but like if you look at images of Ben Affleck from the town, or just watch that movie. Um, that's Bruce Wayne to me. Like, he just I looks agree. like somebody who's just carrying such a depressed burden on his shoulders. Um, yeah. I, it's one of those classic situations of, same with Henry Cavill, in my opinion, great casting choice, poor timing. Mm. This wasn't the right yeah. project for those guys. Interesting. I like a lot of elements in the in that movie, but, but it just... That the look, the look that he had as Batman was like the perfect cinematic Batman, in my opinion. It just, yeah, it was a nice mix of costume and uh, uh, of comic booky, but also yeah. like you could take it seriously, and it was menacing looking. And, yeah. Oh yeah, the the introduction of Batman in that movie where he's like in the corner on the ceiling of yeah, that, that was good yeah, shitty apartment. Good. It's it's straight out of a horror movie it's really scary hmm. and some of the moments with him out of the costume as bruce wayne are, are really good i like him as batman but the movie uh, which i enjoy I, yeah. I don't i don't know i i watch it and because i i own it and so i watch it every once in a while and i tr i don't think about it while i'm watching it and i don't pay attention to the story and i just take it in and it's enjoyable if you kind of just let it happen. <laughs> about you know? That doesn't God. sound like a good experience. <laughs> just let it yeah, happen. I, I, I yeah. found that it, it's like the, the, the longer, the extended one, I found that there's almost like they're trying to do so many ideas crammed into it and then they forgot to do like the superhero action stuff in it. Like hmm. you're waiting for 90% of the movie for Batman to finally show up again. And it's like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, I think if they had, if they had just made Batman, the villain of the movie, which is when they announced that movie is kind of what I thought they were going to do is like, I, yeah, it's a man of steel sequel, but Batman's the villain this time. And you know, right. they'll probably end up buddies at the end. Yeah. You'd assume, but they kind of, they, I don't know. It's it's definitely, I think, more of a Batman movie than a Superman. There's, like, no Superman in that movie. He has, like, yeah. four lines of dialogue, which is heartbreaking for me. 
with somebody as charismatic as Henry Cavill, you didn't give him anything to do but scowl, and he's super. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's That's the most charismatic, likable guy, you know, since Henry Cavill, or uh, Henry Cavill, since Christopher Reeve to play that role. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Christopher Reeves is 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 perfect is a the perfect Superman and that first one is one of that like a perfect like it makes you feel good yeah and, and I don't yeah. know that that that's something that I miss in movies where it's like you walk out and you're like oh I feel I feel better yeah <laughs> I don't I don't want to walk out miserable all the time yeah. <sighs> So we're talking about um, live-action Batman at the moment and Superman to some extent. What are your thoughts on Christian Bale's Batman? Because I think even that one is somewhat divisive, especially for comic book fans based off of his like his voice in particular as Batman. How do you yeah, guys feel about Christian I, uh, Bale's portrayal? I, I think he's just great. Yeah. I think yeah, the casting think is great. amazing. His his performance, especially in especially in Batman Begins. I think Batman Begins is probably my favorite film. I mean, I don't know. The Dark Knight's so good, but I love Batman Begins. It's probably the least <sighs> like Nolan-y film, uh-huh. but it's I think the best Batman film of the trilogy. Huh. Yeah, I would agree because right. uh, it's a Bruce Wayne movie. Yeah, I have an unpopular opinion that the Michael Keaton ones are my favorite because they're still like a fun. Hmm. I think Batman Begins is great because that same reason, because it still has that sense of fun. Dark Knight is so bleak. It's not like um, it's not as fun of a movie to watch. No, like Christian Bale obviously is great in in all three of them. and, And I think he's a he's a good he's a he's a great Batman, but as a movie it's like um they are they are you know outside of begins they're pretty depressing watches Hmm. yeah no they are yeah yeah. they are a little bit yeah i remember uh when dark knight came out i I loved batman begins um so i was super excited i was how old was i 13 when the dark knight came out oh gosh uh, yeah i went to the theater and and uh Yeah, it just made like a, a an enormous impression on me because uh, uh-huh. that's I mean a yeah. young impressionable age. I remember just going like, "Holy shit, you can do that with a superhero movie!" Yeah, yeah. like it can just be uh, a phenomenal film as well. Yeah, yeah. there have been really good superhero yeah. movies. Yeah, but they were sort of like in yeah. that genre, whereas Dark Knight's like a crime thriller that right. just oh. happens to be a Batman movie. Right. You just made me feel so old. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> well, it's, it's yeah, nice we that do that met, to Todd too. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. Matt, it's good you're here because now Todd has someone on a cultural level to relate to because we're all <laughs> within like a year yeah. of each other. I think yeah, I was I, like I, twenty I, when that movie came out. Really? Well, I'll, yeah. I'll, I, I saw Superman, the first Superman in the theater when I was, was six or seven or eight or something. Oh. <laughs> and it was amazing. I mean, it's yeah. really, there weren't, you know, there weren't blockbusters like that back then. The, uh, start When Star Wars and Superman came out, it was like a real one-two punch of like being a phenomenon. Like that was, nobody had ever seen anything like that before. I feel like everything's so jaded now. And and and, yeah. and they, uh, uh, I, I, I can't no, I, I can't imagine going funny. back to like the the way that you felt when you first saw some of these things that were just. I mean, I remember yeah. seeing this the, the the restored Star Wars in, in theaters when they re released them the the first time. The yeah, that was my first movie. Yet, I don't think. Yeah, and and that was that was so cool to see. Yeah, and, definitely. Uh, well, and they went back. I remember my grandpa taking me. Yeah. yeah, that was cool. Like I know everyone, you know, dumps on it now, but like, well, you've never seen graph like graphics yeah. like that before. Like the CG Java was cool. I remember yeah. being blown away by it. Like, oh my god, look, he's yeah. moving. 
yeah yeah it seemed like they were really onto something <laughs> it was just gonna get then you look at it now and you're like uh give me the ones i had on vhs <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's i really appreciate practical effects now and that a big reason is because of you know what they were able to achieve I mean, I remember even later on getting older and rewatching the original Star Wars and still going, how did they do that stuff? Like, it still looks mm-hmm. really... It took me a long time to start thinking that the movie movie looked old at all. Or, oh, I can see the wires. Even the the speeder looks... Look, that looked totally real to me as a kid. I mean, and the sound design. Ugh, man. Yeah. I feel like it still thing. does look real to me. It, it, yeah, it's more convincing than 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 the new than the new stuff and the prequels because it was at least practical. Yeah. I don't. It, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I um, agree. One thing though with the with the to, to go back to Batman is that when you watch like the old Batmans, the Batman eighty nine, like the Keaton ones, and then you compare them to the new stuff, the Christian Bales. Ben Affleck stuff is like the fight choreography of the movies today is so like they've they've really got it down to science how to how how to make these guys look cool when they're fighting like Michael Keaton fighting that's, dudes was that's... really yeah. quirky wasn't it yeah yeah but it also was, wasn't they... yeah wasn't Tim Burton's main focus he, I don't think he cared that no. much and it's he funny because it's pretty good. Christopher Nolan, yeah. at least in Batman Begins, I don't think had quite figured out how to film fight. a fight sequence yet. Yeah, he gets better. He definitely did. But they're they're very very choppy, um, and some of that may have been a choice because uh, I do I, he's obviously just one of the most remarkable, at least modern directors. Um, but there is an argument to be made that like yeah, the fight sequences in, in Batman Begins are thrilling. But are yeah. they filmed in a way that's really impressive? Maybe not. Um, I think I, I agree. With you, I would, yeah, I would go as far as to say that in all three of those, the fights, uh, like you can barely see what's even happening. They're they're mm-hmm. not readable. It's just mm-hmm. all elbows and shaky cam. He always and hits kind of like our spot. podcast. <laughs> all, all elbows and shaky cam. Yeah, a lot of elbows. <laughs> well, that's I, 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 here's a comics question for you guys. Like, how do you how, do you guys struggle with drawing fight scenes? And or do you like drawing fight scenes? Like, I, I always I have a tough time with them. Yeah, it's it's hard to compose two figures in a way that's visually interesting. Um, going at it like that, I think, because there's a, there's a few like sort of arrangements of two guys punching the shit out of each other that kind of work. Right. And if you're drawing like a long, drawn out sequence, you know, you do have to get kind of inventive. Um, mm. And I always feel like things have been done before when I do them. Not that that's necessarily like a bad thing, because of course. Usually, usually, if it's good, it's been done before. Well, yeah, Matt, I, uh, I think that's a great question because, like, I think that fight scenes are fun to draw, but it took me up until this year, I would even say, to even feel comfortable doing them because of what Nate just pointed at. Like, you can draw someone getting punched, you can draw someone getting kicked, or you can draw someone getting hit mm-hmm. by something, you know, and. Mm. If you're yeah. not like in the creative mind space to like make that as visually interesting as possible, it can be very daunting to tackle a fight scene. At least in my experience, yeah. it totally is. Yeah, and, and also the, yeah, like, I, the geography of them, of them. Yeah, yeah I tried point. to in in when I first graduated college, and I was just like sending out sample pages, like it was you know 1976, and you could still get work that way. <laughs> Um, I did a book or, uh, you know, like a little five page story of like, uh, Orion fighting Calabac. <laughs> and, uh, I had sort of like had enough story in front of me that I didn't want to draw like 10 pages. Cause I was like, well, they, these guys typically want like five or so pages. 
and I had this fight sequence that I wanted. And so I tried to, and I need to pull it out and kind of look at what I did because some of the ideas may have still been valid. Like do, it was like the bottom, like probably two thirds of the page. And I had small panels behind like sort of a big splashy, um, like fun fighting pose with these guys like punching each other. And then I did like around it, maybe like six or so small panels of like individual moves they were doing. It's sort of like, I imagined it as like a fight montage mm-hmm. yeah. as a way to get around, like drawing two pages of them fighting each other. Yeah. And I don't know I that like when I did it, then it worked. But I, 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 yeah, I think that it could work maybe if I tackled it now or, or actually practiced that sort of like idea it's a it, it is tough. I, I've only done a couple where I felt like I'm I've gotten it like successfully. It's it's um uh, here like this one's this one's the one time where I feel like and it's on the here's a plug. It's on the crimson, it's on my yeah. site. But like it's mm. yeah. Ooh. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh I mean, yeah, and all the panels of, are pretty big, huh? Like you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I don't know. It, it is, it is a, it is such a hard thing to do, though. And and it, and, and comics is even, is so reliant on it, but it, but it is a tough skill. So I, I don't know. Yeah. I do feel like um, uh, like the fr- Frank Miller style of he does a lot of good with like um, yeah directional stuff which i always try to pull from right i was just yeah and some of that yeah can be like if you're drawing something you've drawn before you know someone's seen before maybe like move the camera you know quote unquote uh just to give it a little bit more like uh like a visual spin on it throw a little english on it (laughs) yeah i uh, I was gonna say i really liked your fight scene in um leap m (laughs) Or oh, thanks. The, the several yeah. that are in there, the action sequences, I really appreciated. They were um, they were tough too. <laughs> they were messy. <laughs> like those pages are, those pages are are gross to look at. Let's see, here, like this one. Well, actually, it's not as messy, but this one I thought read kind of clear. Um, these ones, like this, is too messy. Like I don't think it reads well, um, at all anymore. Um, but you know, it, it, man, it is, um, it's tough though. Yeah. I thought I was setting myself up here for some success because there's so many just like spot blacks that I was planning yeah, on doing, yeah. but I don't, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm, it's weird what's happening. I opened a new bottle of ink and it's like super, super wet. And so I'm getting cleaner lines than I have been getting for the past like month or so. And so I'm actually trying to lean into that just because the ink's not really dry yet. Oh yeah. That's looking really clean. And so, yeah. And it's something that I, I mentioned on the Superman episode that I like to make Superman pretty clean, not like super, super clean, but Batman, I have no problem with like getting really kind of gritty and textural with it. But this one I'm, I'm, I don't know. I almost want to go back with like a shittier brush and uh, and add in a little texture to some of these spots because like I am getting like really clean lines right now because the the ink's new and I didn't really have a chance to dry it out. What kind of ink are you using? I am using a Dr. Martin's Black Star right now. Ooh. What do you What do you um, use? I I'm using. Um, I, I bought one of these just big things of speedball a while a while ago at oh, the, yeah. um, the Qbert store, store. Got a the Qbert store. Um, huh. uh, so I use that. I've been using that. I do have a bottle of Black Star that I think I've used most of. So I've also used that. I'm not too picky. I kind of just fill everything up with whatever's at hand. Um, I like this. Um, uh, uh, Sumi ink. 
I did like using it, but oh, I have some of that. Yeah, I can't. Um... I didn't. Uh, I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it though. It wasn't. It, uh, it wasn't super super dark. Yeah, uh, well, I from... usually leave leave the bottle open a lot, and, and yeah, I yeah, I do like... too. It did. That's what I was saying. Um, like, I just opened a new bottle, and so it's like oh. the ink is super wet. And so I'm getting yeah. kind of cleaner lines than I was than I was prepared for. Mm. And so I'm trying to like leave it on the brush for a minute, or like just do a bunch of marks over here, because uh, I use I use quite a bit of dry brush when I ink. Uh, but yeah, like you said, I'm I'm not super super picky either. I kind of found that I like Black Star, so I've just been buying that because I know it works. But if I yeah, find something in the future, I'll definitely. I'm open to like switching again. Just, I feel like it's just like whatever I find, and then I just kind of use it, and then I I probably should get more organized about like figuring out which brands I really like. But the Speedball stuffs worked pretty well um, so far, and it it, it flows pretty good. I, I'm um, mostly brush right now. Um, what brush do you use? Or brushes? I'm using yeah this Raphael two. I uh, I don't have oh, the yeah. steadiest of hands, and so I, um, I I hesitate to use like too big of a brush because I can't. Um, it's tough for me to get a thin a thin line out of it. Mm -hmm. The two I I sometimes have a tough time, but they these have lasted pretty. This one's finally the point starting to go, but it's lasted most of this year, so that's pretty good for 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 a brush. Yeah, at least for me, and I'm, I'm pretty rough on everything. I have been using some nib in nib in here, and that's just uh, like a one or two. Um, I have the rapidographs over here, but I don't know if I'm actually going to use them. Yeah, I like the uh, I like the Raphael brushes. Um, I have a bunch of number twos. I have a number four that I'm definitely going to break out on this one, since there's so much black. Yeah that I'm planning on it. Uh, I'm using right now, it's a Windsor Newton Series 7 number 3 um, is one, of my, one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've had this one. I've used it for uh, I don't even know. Maybe two years. Really? So I used to use them all the time. And then there was a while there where they just were crappy. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm feeling, feeling this uh, one. Yeah, I'm feeling this one kind of like starting to give out a little bit, and I have another one ready to go. So I'm kind of anxious to see if it's as good because I guess I, I've used a bunch of their number twos, and mm -hmm. some of them are really, really good. And I can just get an almost like invisible line, <laughs> you know, super razor thin line with them. Uh, but I do yeah. I like the number three because it gives me a little more variety. But I, I I'm super nervous to break out the new one. Because uh, I have heard, I've had pretty good luck with Windsor Newton, but I've heard from a bunch of people that like the uh, quality is kind of spotty. I yeah. have not had good so luck. That's why I the, you know, cheaper. Yeah, I just but I, this, yeah, this... you know, I've, I've, uh, I've had the same experience with Raphael. I've, I've bought some of those that were mm -hmm. just duds from the get. Yeah. Um, which is just such a bummer. Especially but the ones that are good expensive. are really good. Like even the round mm. males are cheaper, but they're still not, still not cheap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it still hurts when you buy it, and it just sucks. <laughs> it's like, that was my experience this summer. I bought my first Windsor Newton because I've only ever used like, like the eight pack that comes for like four bucks from like any art store for brushes. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, you know what? I'm a professional. I'm gonna buy actually like professional tools. And I think I got one drawing out of it before like everything started fraying and. Um, not keeping shape while I was inking. Um, so yeah, I just like had no luck with it. And so I went back to yeah. um, my cheapo stuff and I've been using them for the last couple months. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a freak when it comes to like cleaning my brushes. So that's, yeah. I feel like hopefully that's why I get life out of them. Like so much life. Uh, that's totally what it is. Not. Yeah, because I... Every once in a while, I'll forget to clean them, and I'll find one just, like, sitting on top of my water cup in the morning, and I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> and I'm so, I'm so mad at myself. 
but sometimes I can save it. Sometimes they're gone. Um, but yeah, this one has been just a champ. Uh, I've drawn a couple issues with it and, uh, I've used it for, I think every episode of the show. That's awesome. I, I, I um, and so the guy, you guys both in like procreate. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. But I use it pretty, uh, me and Todd use it very differently. <laughs> do, you, do you think so? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I pretty much use it <laughs> like I'm doing traditional work basically, but I just use it to be like yeah. really clean. Cause we were saying like last, yeah. like after the ep- episode last time that I used to be a lot less clean than I am. And then as soon as I moved to digital, it just over the course of like five pieces basically even maybe even less i just started becoming so much like just naturally working way cleaner i don't really know what happened yeah. there <laughs> <laughs> sounds like you're acclimating well, it though yeah yeah i think I mean, so i mean i i had a goal in my i had a something in my head that i wanted to do and i knew it was going to be easier to do it digitally um so that was one of the motivations for me because I kept, I kept seeing this art style, I guess, in my head that I wanted to draw like. Um, but if I'd been happy, I was also happy with the, my traditional drawing at that point because I worked really hard on it. And I, I could have stayed at that too and just done that. But I kept having this wanting, I kept, I felt like I had a painter inside of me that was not getting out. And I, the reason I needed to go digital is because I was masking, I was painting traditionally, but I was masking things off. And, um, I was like wrecking my, I was wrecking my studio with all the stuff I was trying to do. And I just, <laughs> I just, this voice in my head was like, it'd be so much easier if you could do this digitally. Like, what are you doing? Go, go get a, you know, figure it out can't be that hard yeah (laughs) or or however you want to put it but yeah i I, I guess my i i find it like i enjoy digital like and it's and it's certainly useful and it's and it's faster and and especially for things like some things it just it's it's it is a lot better I just, yeah. you know what? I I find myself more stressed when drawing digitally than like drawing on paper. Like I, I feel like that whole like stress relief element. It I don't I don't necessarily get it because I'm so worried about things being clean. Like oh shit, yeah. that that uh, uh, I mean that Batman piece looks dope. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, I it's funny what you were just saying because I'm I especially lately as i've started to like refine the way i draw digitally i do definitely get like a big stress relief thing from it like especially when i'm thinking i can just really relax with it even if i'm drawing stuff like like the shorts i'm drawing right now i have not Mm. like really penciled them in at all i've done like a couple lines but Mm. i'm doing like brand new lines but for some reason i'm just really not having to think about it that much Mm. and having a lot of fun you know what? It, I, I think what changed for me is I, I started to enjoy using Pro White a lot more, and so I just don't even care. <laughs> I, 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 like I'm gonna have to change a bunch of things in here, and I, I don't know. It's like I almost like the look of the whiteout on the page, and I feel like oh, I, I you know, I had some more fun with this. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I get what you mean. When I was younger and I started like seeing artists uh, using whiteout, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Like, I didn't even yeah. think of it as, like, oh, because they're making mistakes. I was just like, fuck, that's what professionals do. I need to start doing that. It's so cool. <laughs> it's yeah. called Pro White for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. All of music. Well, here, guys, do you want to hop into each other's um, individual spots where we're at and then uh, wrap up this part one? Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Well, hey, I'm interested to check out Matt's. Uh, I'm very eager to, to look at it. So, Matt, I'm going to give you the spotlight first Uh-oh. and uh, check out your Dark Knight Returns piece. Well, here's where we are. Let's see if I can pop this down a little bit. Um, 
it's 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 coming along okay i think i uh have like a rowboat in the front and so i gotta rework it um because i want it to overlap the figures a little bit and there's gonna be a lot of black because it is batman and then i'm yeah that's i gotta figure out the tunnel of love at the top so it's nice so anyways that's so that's where great. we're at that's looking really that's good. looking good i can't wait to see so, it finish yeah, I, I, for, uh, I think it's going to come along okay. Yeah, Matt, I think you picked the perfect topic for your art style. Like, I think that Frank yeah. Miller Batman just works so well with your inking techniques. It, it's so I mean, cool. It's, it's, you know, I, I can't, I can't lie that he is one of my, the, the my biggest reference points and, 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 and influences. So I gotta, I just gotta wear it on my sleeve at this point. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, man, hey, man, that's absolutely stellar, and I'm so excited yeah, to see you I, get into it with the robo in part two, especially. Yeah. Well, and and, and and I find that sometimes, like, I need to erase the pencils because I just can't, I can't really tell what I did so far, <laughs> and so that's why we're we're cleaning it up. But Joker's going to be. I'm going to try and keep thing that i want to do with this piece is i want the joker to feel like the white and have everything else be as black as possible around them so that's awesome <laughs> i think that's great i think it's gonna look really well in that composition too for him to just be like right. this negative space in there yeah that's the hope well here we'll hop around johnny I am dying to check out your spooky detective noir Batman. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. Um, so this is where we're at right now. I thought this piece was going to be real quick for me. I don't know why I thought that, because the pencils have taken ages. But um, I'm not finished with Batman yet. <laughs> and there's a lot of other stuff to draw in first. Well, after that. Uh, so I went... I already had his head drawn. Uh when we started which i was pretty happy with kind of went with like an adam west year one kind of thing like a little bit of a mix of both oh uh, i love that yeah thanks i, I did like the, the little cross on the nose which i definitely think i'm gonna do for basically every batman i draw from now on as a little callback i like it um, it's a great design piece yeah thanks <laughs> yeah it was I've always, for a while, I've been trying to implement that weird little box he has on his nose, because I always thought it looked huh? cool. And I, but for yeah. like, I never got what the purpose of it was or what design-wise it was meant to represent. But I always thought it looked good. Um, so I'm definitely going to keep that. And I started really rendering his cords there, real foldy. <laughs> yeah, with, uh, <laughs> with a big, big hefty belt. <laughs> nice. Nate, watch out. <laughs> yeah i'm coming for you with the, with the folds <laughs> oh hell no <laughs> that should be an episode where we just have a challenge to draw like a window cloth or like a bed sheet or something you know like <laughs> just all folds yeah i would hate that so much <laughs> i'll schedule it after our horse off <laughs> oh man, no. Yeah, no. yeah. Looking forward to that one a lot. <laughs> yeah, Johnny, I, I think graphically your Batman stuff. just works so well. Um, oh, thanks, man. Yeah, it's, yeah, I was. It's awesome. I'm so excited to get into this one. <laughs> thanks, man. Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I kind of on this one, I, I was like, I've, we've all drawn Batman so much, and like uh, Todd said in the beginning, or yeah, I think it was Todd we all like have our image in our heads that is i think always being refined of like what your batman would look like and yeah. so for this episode i was like okay you know what i'm gonna at least semi definitively draw it out so it's it's i'm pretty happy with it right now it's pretty close to what i usually have in my head as batman that's awesome thanks man yeah but yeah what I, you got going on? I was gonna say yeah johnny that is very much how I would imagine in your head Batman would look based off every oh, other piece you. of art I've ever seen on your, you know, portfolio. Like <laughs> that just makes sense. Like that's how Batman would look. 
in your oh, I'm glad I'm pulling it off then. <laughs> well, Todd, I admittedly yeah. was kind of jaw dropped at your Batmobile at the beginning of the episode. And I know you're doing another yeah. Batman oh, yeah. piece at the moment. Uh, so if you want to showcase oh, that no. first or whatever, but your Batmobile was like making me drool. Oh, That's yeah. like my dream car. <laughs> I added fins. And uh, yeah, I had this, I yeah. had this idea oh. for a, a black. Actually, I'll, I'll see if I can turn the screen down. Does that, does that help? Can you guys see it? Oh my god, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh my god, dude. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Oh man. That is my dream <laughs> car, man. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. I'll tell you that my grandfather raced a Dodge Charger and it was the loudest car I've ever heard in my life. And he started it up, the whole neighborhood got woke up. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've had it in my head of, of that. I, I, so I'm trying to design a Batman uh, stealth suit to go along with it. And I was thinking, like, so I've got like this bat skeleton that I'm trying to integrate into it. Now, to be fair, I'm cheating and I'm using a silhouette from an older Batman drawing that I did. But then I took a Batman or a bat skeleton and uh, uh, drew over it and I've dropped it onto him. And I'm not quite sure if it's working yet, but uh, I'm hoping to get it there. But I'm hoping to have it be a combination of it's going to look like futuristic Tron and old Victorian Gothic at the same time. That's my goal. We'll see how that go, how that actually goes, uh, whether I can pull it off. But I'm hoping to drop this guy in front of the Batmobile and have them both in the same image at the end. That'll be crazy yeah. cool. I'm really digging yeah. that, that yeah. skeleton. Yeah, it's it doesn't look like it's, it's almost like Spider-Man meets Batman. Yes. Yeah, well, that's not my goal. So, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, but, but the, the, is, the giant you know, icon is cool. Yeah, no, it's I'm, I don't t I take that as not a not an insult at all. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it's but the vision the thing I've got in my head is I'm trying to I'm, I can kind of see it but I'm feeling my way around. I was looking at Tron designs earlier and I'm I'm trying to not make it look too obviously Tron. Uh, that that car is definitely uh, Tron inspired on some level. And uh, yeah, I, black and red uh, always looks great with Batman. I think I'm a huge advocate of red uh in batman anytime i agree with that full-heartedly yeah i think same. the entire color palette yeah. or the entire color spectrum i think red is probably the one that fits that character the best oh yeah well that that fourth season of batman where they made the sky red all the time is just like oh man so good Well, here, I'll jump around to mine real quick just to uh, wrap out all of our closer looks. Um, I'm almost done the line work on the figures. Um, this is a daunting piece because of all of the uh, cityscape in the background, so I doubt that there's any chance I will do any brushwork tonight. But that's okay because I'm very much enjoying drawing this. Um, Carrie Kelly is one of my favorite Robins just design-wise. Carrie Kelly is a great robin character especially for batman in his older years um yeah seeing so much of her or seeing so much in her of like young dick grayson and whatnot um i think her having that old school type of suit really works well um yeah but yeah it's fun I i'm hoping to elaborate more on it in part two about um your own personal takes on batman and developing that because i know i told you guys off camera that with this it's kind of the culmination of me developing my Batman throughout several different pieces this year and um, now applying that take on Batman to Frank Miller's iconic old beefy version of the character um, kind of full circle brings it from more of the younger Batman I've been drawing and now doing this iconic version of the character who's you know 300 pounds of muscle <laughs> you know yeah. um, I'm, I'm excited to do this piece just for the fact of like developing my take on Batman, but I'll get more into that in part two for sure. But as of right now, I'm really enjoying how the piece is coming out 
and uh, I think graphically speaking, the composition works really well. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I love the uh, the yeah. poses. Yeah, it's awesome. Thanks, man. I like the proportions on the Batman. You got the like big. It's tough to make him convincingly big, and you got that. Thanks, man. Yeah, actually, I have um our unaired Joker episode where we lost the audio. I have it right here <laughs> for reference because this uh, is my favorite drawing of Batman I've done so far. And I have it up just so I can reference it directly to think of. Over there is the young version. Let's translate it to this older take on the figure. Um, and kind of just like pull and stretch everything. So it's like bigger torso, heftier biceps, you know. Um, <laughs> trying to get that linebacker feel to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But hey, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to Ink Drink Think, episode 10. This has been part one, so please make sure you come back for part two. We're going to be continuing our Batman-themed episode. And to leave it up on the cliffhanger, we will be talking about a little bit your personal takes, not you, the audience, but my co-hosts here, take on Batman. Yeah, we don't, we don't care what you think. No, don't, <laughs> don't leave any comments about it. Don't hit us up. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah in part two we're gonna get a little bit more into our personal takes on batman personal preferences stylistically shoulder pads long ears thin, thin skinny overweight you name it we'll yeah. get play overweight <laughs> extremely <laughs> overweight batman <laughs> just obese yeah. batman so of course guys you can check out links to all of our social media platforms in the description below. Not only can you find ours there, but special guest Matt Pataglia's website and Instagram links are going to be there too. So please, I implore you, check out Matt's work. He's a fantastic colorist, inker, penciler, all-around comic book creator. He's fantastic. You're going to love his work if you're liking what he's doing in this Batman episode. So please check those out in the description below. Leave a comment. Tell us what you're thinking about our conversation, our Batman pieces, Tell everybody why you think my version of Batman so far is better than everybody else's. That's okay. Um, <laughs> and of course, guys, <laughs> this has been Michael Pickard, joined by Johnny Wise, Nate Wells, Todd Blackwood, and again, special guest, Matt Pataglia. Thank you, Matt, for showing up. This has been an absolute pleasure having you as our first guest. And yep. make sure to tune in to part two, everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs>